is testimony in the record about you being told that your mom was in a mental hospital uh, during this period of time. Do you recall that? I do. As you sit here today, can you tell the jury how being told these things about your mom, especially now your mom is gone, how that affects you in everyday life? So when I was in the hospital, I was told that she was in a mental institution, and that's one of the reasons I couldn't see her. So the first thing I'm thinking is why in the world would she be in a mental institution? You know, she's not mentally ill. She doesn't have anything wrong with her, and she hasn't done anything to our family. So it really did not make sense. When I was allowed to visit with my dad, I asked him, and he looked at me like, what are you talking about? And that's when I started to realize most of the things that these doctors were telling me <laughs> were false. Does that, again, give you difficulty in certain situations, trusting what someone is telling you? All the time. Suspicion, in other words. Yes, I really don't trust people. Um, so now, uh, on this, uh, the post-traumatic aspect of things, uh, they've testified before of certain places that bother you, but can you tell us a little bit more about just random things that bring back these feelings, these memories, these concerns? Like Yeah, so, I mean, the most obvious one is St. Pete. And I didn't always, you know, not like going to St. Pete. I actually went there with my mom quite a bit when I was staying at the Ronald McDonald House for easier access to get to my infusion center. My mom and I would go downtown St. Pete and she would wheel me around and there was this one gelato spot that we always went to, Pechugo Gelato. Um, she always got coffee, that was her favorite, and we would just sit and have a good time. Even though I was hurting, we still found time together and to make good memories. And now the fear of running into somebody at like in or at, you know, places in St. Pete is greater than the potential joy I may derive from revisiting those places that I used to spend time with my mom at. I want to just mention some things. I don't want to take you back there, okay? So if this... Mm -hmm. I'm just going to... Beeping noises. Yes, yeah, so even... I mean, beeping noises are kind of like all around us. So when, you know, you don't buckle your seatbelt, the little beeping noise goes off. Or if I'm backing up my car, the beeping noise. Um, at, when I was at school, when I was going to school physically, the alarm in between periods. But those prolonged, like, rhythmic beeping noises really bother me because in a hospital, that's all you hear 24-7. So in a way, the whole entire world in which like I walk in, there's always going to be reminders. And it's hard because, I mean, right now I could walk outside and I could point out 15 things that remind me of what I went through. What about ticking of a clock? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, when I was in the PICU, um, that's all I looked at was the clock. It was right at, you know, a little bit above eye level. Um, and that's all I did was stare at that clock, and I was just waiting and begging, like, okay, this is what I did. So after it would reach 2 o'clock, for example, I would say, just one more hour, you could do it, and then 3. And I just thought that eventually I would reach an hour where they would tell me I could go home, but it didn't happen for three and a half months after that. And because you were 10, you really didn't have the emotional uh, development yet to, to deal with this? Correct. What about people in scrubs? I have random notes here, so I'm going to just save things. Yeah, so, I mean, people, you know, work in hospitals, doctor's offices, whatever. And after work, they might go to the grocery store or they might walk their dog or they might go to, you know, Sephora or the mall. And whenever I see people in scrubs, it's, I'm like afraid of you. Like, I will not go near you. 
I don't know. I just can't do it. What about, uh, maybe I covered this, uh, public bathrooms trying to... Yes, yeah, so this is a more awkward thing to talk about, but when I was staying at J Hatch, they would always have the door open whenever I was using the restroom. So I have like a hard time in public bathrooms knowing that somebody may be waiting for a stall or if someone is in the stall next to me, I get really nervous because it just reminds me of the nurses who were like watching me urinate and go use the restroom. So then, um, what about just everywhere? Do you, is there anywhere you feel safe, Maya? No, and not even my own home. And for a lot of people, that's where they go to relax. But, and it's not anything that, you know, within the home, it's just the fact that we've lived through so much. And during that time, we were staying at the house we are still in. Are you voting to move or not move? Oh, move. <laughs> yes, I would love to move. All right. So this takes us now to future plans. And back when we, we first talked, we talked a little bit about college, right? Yes. And uh, we, uh, uh, we talked about uh, some places you might want to go. Mm -hmm. My school. <laughs> How have your plans changed, if they haven't? I mean, you talked about going to school in New York. or What, what steps have you taken lately to actually make this happen as opposed to wanting to? Well, again, the idea of college sounds really great. I, I mean, I'm a senior in high school, so everyone's asking me, like, where do you want to go? Um, what do you want to do? Have you submitted any applications yet? Not a single one, and uh, some of the deadlines are passed, um, and I really don't care, if I'm being honest. It's not that I don't want to go to school. It's just kind of like, what's the point? I feel like this chapter of my life needs to be resolved before I could actually take a step forward and moving on. Um, in a lot of ways, I still feel trapped in you know my 10 and 11 year old body because that's where I've my headspace has been living for the last six and a half years. Well, given your obvious performance now, the schools you're looking at they're going to be academically challenging. I would like to think so. All right. Well, how do you think you're going to do in those environments with really cutthroat academic pressure and competition? I think it's going to be really challenging. The first time I was ever alone from my family was at John Hopkins All Children's Hospital. And I'm a little bit afraid that when I'm alone again for a prolonged period of time that I'll just feel the same way I did when I was 10 or 11. Sure. And then am I a difficult topic, but do you have any survivor guilt? Yes. Um, it's something that is also really difficult to talk about, but I was one of the last people to talk with my mom. And after finding out about her death, the next thing I thought of was, well, maybe if I said something different or... How did it relate to, like, do you retrace your steps and your conversations those last few days? All the time. And what concerns do you have about things you might have said or not said? Well, there's a lot of, again, topics off limits. So it was kind of hard to have, like, um, emotional and personal conversations with her. Sure. In a way, it felt scripted. So I just feel like maybe she thought I wasn't, like, I didn't care or such, like, was talking with her, but... Those moments were so, so special to me. Um, uh -huh. Do you ever challenge yourself about whether telling her about what, how you felt and what was happening in there was not the right thing to do for you? Yes, I feel like if I would have let her think that I was doing okay, that maybe 
she wouldn't have taken the step to end her life to get me out of there. Right. And now, looking back on it, does it worry you that you told her those things? Yes, I feel like it's my fault. 